What up, y'all? Anybody still up tonight? What's up, Shot Town? What up, that? Mama, what you doing up? You see the Chicago? No Derrick Rose, but still got James Fortune. I ball. I'm representing Shaw tonight. Pensacola was incredible. You missed Pensacola. What up, Deke? Deke. Pensacola was off the chain. God, I hate you missed that. We had a great time at Deliverance Temple. Y'all can't hear? There's no volume? Y'all can't hear me? Paraland, what up? I be hitting that Cracker Barrel out there sometimes. Kashada. Y'all, did any of y'all get to check out um, a full gospel? Yeah, I didn't make it this year. Oh, Android. This Android that y'all can hear me on? Android. What's up, bro? Deception was incredible, man. It has had its fire, ain't it? It's fire like James Fortune. <laughs> Android. Oh, an iPhone came here. Wow. Somebody said, I'm on Android. This sounds good to me. Team iPhone. What up, Kevin? Oh, you can't do it. What up? No D Rose. Nah. Oh, iPhone. I they say iPhone is fine. People don't play about the iPhone, the Androids. We well, I told you I want to give y'all a chance to see the interview. Um and we could talk about it. I know it's late, but um I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. If you didn't get to see the interview, it's on my Facebook page. James Fortune and Fire on Facebook. I posted the whole interview link. That's part one. It's going to be another one tomorrow. It's from the Christian Broadcast Network, CBN. Um, Gainesville. But I um, want to let y'all check it out. We'll talk about it. Here we go. James Fortune's music has topped the gospel charts for more than a decade. Ministry was my life. You know, it's all I've known. I started playing the drums at five years old. Uh, it was my, the first time I got involved with music, you know, playing drums for my dad's church at just five. I could barely reach the pedal. Fortune is a preacher's kid from Houston, Texas. He's recorded seven albums, earned two Grammy nominations, and performed for packed crowds around the world. But in March, this singer and songwriter traded those venues for this courtroom where he pleaded guilty to assaulting his wife. You've been given five years probation. Yeah. Spent five days in jail. Yes. What were five days in jail for you, minister of music, like? You know, a lot of people, of course, in there knew me because from the media reports and the news. And But it, it was, it's not, I can't imagine any more than that. I mean, it was rough. I had a lot of time to just think. You know, I had a lot of time to think, why, why am I in here? What, what am I doing? You know, because I, I've sung in so many prisons. I've ministered in prisons. You know, we've gone to prisons and, I mean, maximum security prisons and shared the gospel and ministered. And now, you know, here I am as, as, a, as a, an inmate myself. One thing I will say that God allowed me to understand is that I'm only in here because of my, my own bad decisions, my own choices. It's nobody else's fault. And you did 175 hours community service? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm still doing still it. Still doing that? Yeah. I'm and still, what does that involve? Whatever the city needs, picking up trash, cutting grass. It's it's not it's not just chilling, I'll tell you. It's <laughs> not, I mean, you're right, it's Texas, Houston in the heat, so. James's wife, Cheryl, isn't speaking publicly, but issued this statement to him in court. I hope in all of this, you get help, serious help. Although this probation might be like a slap on the wrist, I hope you look at it as a moment to better yourself and change something within you for your future. In terms of, of what happened, there are reports that you threw her against a wall, hit her with a stool, threw her out of the house. Were there any broken bones? There were no broken bones. There were no internal injuries. There was no broken pelvis. Those reports were false. Um, 
her being beat with a stool was was false. Um, now, you know, like I said, I did put my hands on her. I did um, physically uh, restrain her and remove her from my room. I can't so much control and try to um, talk about what didn't happen, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's I'm just trying to take responsibility and talk about what did happen. And the, at the end of the day, I was a perpetrator and I was an abuser. This was something that was difficult for me because a lot of people were saying, you know, don't talk about it, you know, just kind of just let it let it go and, you know, let people forget about it, hopefully, and move on with your life. But as I was praying, it's my spirit that didn't sit well with me. And God was like, I want you to share your story because domestic violence is something that the church doesn't talk about. And so I'm basically stretching out saying, you know what, I was a perpetrator of a, uh, domestic violence. I was an abuser in more ways than one. Uh, but I believe that's how God is healing me. Instead of just believing and praying, James is fully involved in the healing. Since the 2014 assault, he has been in therapy and allowed our cameras to follow him to a meeting. Um, just continuing his journey. Continue. How did you get to the point of, of, of being arrested? How does this all happen? What happens? I've learned a lot more now since I've been in therapy mm -hmm. um, for almost 18 months. I was a perpetrator of domestic violence. I was an abuser. Uh, I thought domestic violence was just, you know, if you hit your wife or if you, you know, slap your wife. But I found out there's so many, there's 18 forms of abuse and only one of them is physical. So I, it didn't start with physical. Um, that night, that's what caused me to be arrested, obviously. Um, but there was other forms of, of, of uh, abuse that I was a perpetrator of, intimidation, male privilege, feeling like I'm the I'm the king of the castle, so what I say goes. That's how it happened that night. You're certainly not a victim in this, but what all have you lost as a result? You can't even put a number on it, you know, because even now there's so many churches who just don't want to, um, don't want me in their church. You know, they don't want to have anything to do with um, with my ministry. Uh, a lot of concerts were canceled. And who knows, just the, the, the concerts that were, were potentially there that people say, you know what, no, we can't, um, we can't have anything to do with that name. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that hasn't been my focus. There's nothing um, material that God can't replace. Um, what's more important to me about what I lost um, was my family, not the financial things. There was a time when I didn't even think I would get to this place of um, to feel um, the way I feel now. Uh, there was a place where it, it seemed like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, it seemed like um, all hope was lost and it, it wasn't anyone's fault but my own. You were suicidal? I, I, I started off taking antidepressants just to help me sleep because I hadn't been getting any sleep. And, uh, just feeling so guilty for what I had did, bad choices that I had made in my life. Um, and I just didn't feel like I had anything to live for. And so at that point, I had made up my mind that I was going to uh, take a whole bottle of those Xanax pills and just um, go to sleep. So you have a bottle of pills that you're thinking I'm going to take and just end it all. Yeah. What stops you? Um, people were praying for me. So many people uh, were letting, letting me know that, James, you know, it's not over. It's not the end. Uh, many pastors, uh, many Christian leaders around the around the country and around the world uh, were reaching out to me. But you get to a point to where you're like, you know what? I don't even deserve forgiveness. I'm out of the reach of grace. For me personally, it was remembering even my grandmother's prayers. You know, praying for me as a, as a as a boy. And, and God kind of told me something. He said, James, prayers don't expire. He said, some of those same prayers that your grandmother, that your your father and mom were praying for you. Uh, those prayers are still keeping you, even in this situation where you feel like you shouldn't be kept. What's been the most difficult part? For me, the most difficult part is um, the separation, you know, um, from my family, mm -hmm. um, you know, even my children, you know, to not know exactly why um, their father is not around as much as he used to be. And try to explain that to them and let them know that, you know, you, it, I, I just made a horrible choice. I just made a terrible decision. And even, even for Cheryl, you know, just one of the things I learned is that I can't make her forgive me or, or, or ever trust me again. Uh, because even that is a control thing. Mm -hmm. And domestic violence is about power and control. Fortune spent six months separated from his four children. Oh, can you get it? These days, he's with them at least once a week. You posted on social media, please pray that during this process, God continues to perfect and restore me so that I'll become a better man, father, and Christian. Yeah. What's this process been like? I'm going to be honest. The process has been very, very um, beyond 
my expectations and my eyes have been open. Yeah, it started out rough. Yeah, I was suicidal and didn't think I had anything to live for. Didn't think my life had any more purpose. I'm like, you know, uh, it's, it's over. But to see how God just is able to keep me every day, I just kept going to sleep and waking up, just kept going to sleep and waking up, believing that change was going to come. As I've shared, I share with other people what God has been doing through my life. So many other people are reaching out and a lot of men are reaching out, but so many women are saying, you know what? We always hear the victims talk, uh, but we never hear the perpetrators speak Absolutely. about where, where this comes from and why this happens and, and how it's not their fault. So the process has been something that I would say was, was necessary. And there's still more work ahead for James Fortune and his family. And hopefully someday, this keeps me going. More music. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Houston, Texas. And thank y'all for, um, for watching. As I continue this journey, um, keep me in your prayers. Uh, if you couldn't hear or um, it wasn't clear, you can go to my Facebook page. And um, it's on Facebook, James Fortune, James Fortune and Fire, um, the official James Fortune page. Thank y'all um, for the prayers. You know, um, it's, um, it's, it's a continual journey, man. It's not easy, but... I'm, I'm built for this and I'm going through it and hopefully there's three 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 groups of people I want to help um, anyone who's abused or, or currently abusing someone in a relationship right now you know I talk about 18 different forms of abuse um, someone who's being abused and also bystanders those of you who who know someone who's being abused and you don't really know you just kind of turn it the other way and you don't really know how to approach it um, understanding that Physical violence is the last form of, of abuse. There's so many other forms before that. Intimidation, economic abuse, um, using the children to abuse the one that you're with, um, male privilege, gender training, um, God, psychological, emotional abuse. Um, so just sharing my story, man, it's not easy. I'm gonna tell you that because you got the people, you see, I don't, I don't block people. You know, they can say whatever they want to say. Um, I don't have time to get caught up in that, but uh, just continue to keep me and uh, my family in your prayers, and I'm going to continue to do what God told me to do. I was like, God, why? Like, why? Why I can't just, you know, just don't talk about it and and just let time, you know, people will, you know, forgive over time. But he's like, that's not, you know, I told you all about the withered hand, and Jesus is like, look, stretch out your hand, show people your issue, and as you reveal it, I'll heal it. Um, and that's just what my, my thing was. And so hopefully some other man who are being abusive can say, you know what, I need to get the help. I need to get professional help. Or, you know, I see what, what James went through. I see all that James lost. Um, he lost his family, lost his job, lost so much. Maybe I need to, you know, get help before, um, before I end up like James. I don't want to be like James. So that's just sharing my story to help somebody else. And to help, um, you know, a lot of victims have been reaching out to me and saying, you know, thank you, man, because my abuser still is denying it. He's still minimizing it. He's still justifying it. And to the victims, that's painful for them to know that they've been abused. And the abuser, the perpetrator is saying that it's their fault or, you know, uh, victim shaming, you know, making it seem like it's something that they did, which we know. Abuse is a choice. I told you it's not a mistake. Mistakes are something, by definition, that's done unintentional. Um, abuse is something that you know is wrong and you do it anyway. So uh, hopefully a lot of victims um, can even get free realizing, you know what, knowing that it's not your fault, knowing that everybody's responsible for their own thoughts, um, feelings, and actions, that nothing that you did <laughs> made the person abuse you the way that they did. It's totally their choice. They decided to be abusive. Uh, and it was a choice that they made, whether it was verbal, emotional, physical, sexual abuse, um, any of that. It, it wasn't your fault. So um, thank you all so much, man, for your um, support. I mean, just for your prayers, man. Continue to pray. I mean, I'm going to continue to do what God told me to do regardless to what the enemy has to say about it. Love you all. I mean, y'all have a blessed night. Uh, thank you all for rocking with me tonight. Love you all more than you know. Uh, y'all have a good night.